that's what uh, we would do. Uh, so for half an hour, we'll go through this step one to seven. And if uh, things are clear as to what we have to do in this exercise, and we are working already working on it, then we can move on to exercise two from tomorrow. Or we may spend one more day to kind of check for ourselves that yes, things are clear to us as to what we have to do in exercise one. Of course, it takes a lot of time. It will take a lot of time to work through this exercise one because it is something which we have to do every moment. Right? And we have the practice quite otherwise. So it will take time. But that is fine. At least it should be clear as to what we have to do and how things are going to happen. And what are the expected kind of speed and outcome and things like that. Then we can work, keep working on it and we can start with exercise two. But before I do that, uh, today and if necessary tomorrow, uh, we'll work through these steps and clarify that. Yes, we are at least clear about what we have to do. And we can do it. So next half an hour, I would like to uh, like you to work through these exercises, step one to seven. <clears throat> so I will uh, go step by step. You can also, uh, you know, go through this step by step. If there is any urgent or pertinent pertinent question in any of these steps, you can of course ask in between, but it would be better that half an hour at least we work through these exercises, these steps, and then if there are clarifications and questions required there, we can respond. So step one, I mean, exercise one is about Paying attention to the self by the self. Observing self by the self. Understanding self by the self. With the purpose that, that we can live within the self in a fulfilling manner, in a state of happiness, in a state of continuous happiness. So the purpose of exercise one is very clear to ensure that I at the level of self am level I am able to live with continuous happiness, continuous fulfillment. That is the purpose. With that purpose, we are trying to understand the self. To understand the self, we are observing the self. To observe the self, we are paying attention to the self. So this is what we are doing in exercise one. Now we are saying that. If I have to start <clears throat> observing the self, right, paying attention to the self, where do I start? So we said we will start from the imagination that is going on in the self. So this is one thing which is going on in the self every moment. And with our competence, it is possible for us to see this imagination. <clears throat> <clears throat> that is going on in the self. So this imagination is going on and my present potential you know is or not only potential, potential and the competence both is good enough to able to see this imagination. So we started with observing the imagination that is going on in the self. Of course, to begin with, we are able to see some of the gross, you know, imagination, you know, imaginations with a lot of disturbances and a lot of agitation, but that is fine. At least we are able to observe, right, with our present competence. So we said we will start with that. And then slowly we'll develop our competence. The potential is there to see subtler and subtler things. But presently we are quite used to gross things. But even with that competence, it is possible for us to see our 
imagination that is going on in the self right even though you know i am able to see the gross imagination that are taking place to begin with so we will look at the imagination we will observe the imagination that is going on in the self <clears throat> every moment continuously so exercise 1 step 1 says i have to be aware of this imagination that is going on in this self i have to be aware of it i have to be mindful of it i have to be observant of it whatever is going on in my imagination whatever is going on in my imagination i just have to observe it i just have to be aware of it i just have to be mindful of it so every moment some imagination is going on every moment i have to be aware every moment i have to observe then we added this qualification that when i am observing my imagination i just have to observe it without any reaction without any reaction <laughs> so if there is a good imagination i don't have to you know try holding on to it if it is a bad imagination i don't have to try removing it so no reaction just being aware just being observant just being mindful just observing what imagination is going on at this moment of time at the background of it we have said that when we are observing the self by the self imagination of the self by the self i can give rest to the body to the eyes because i am not making use of them i am directly observing the self by the self so that we should keep in mind because many times we keep involving the body keep involving the eyes and which creates problem for the body for the eyes for the brain so keep that in mind the background that don't have you know don't involve your body your eyes for observing the imagination in this self by this self so let it happen at the level of self self without involving the body without involving the eyes let the body the eyes be at rest so i'm just observing whatever is there whatever is going on in my imagination at this moment of time without any reaction without trying to hold it or change it by force when i start doing it i find that my attention keeps getting drifted to other things it keeps getting drifted to things outside to other human beings 
to their behavior and so on if that happens we don't have to react to it we just have to see that yes my attention has gone somewhere else and i have to give it my decision that i have to observe my imagination at this moment of time so if i see this without reaction then my attention will come back to my imagination after some time so if it gets dif drifted away just observe that it has drifted away keep with your decision that i have to observe my imagination so your attention will naturally come back after some time in fact when this is happening you can also notice that my attention goes away to those things which i have considered important in the past so if i have considered things outside more important then i am paying you know attention to those things outside if i have considered some other human being to be more important my attention goes there if i have considered his behavior to be important my attention goes there so that is fine that's not uh, the uh, you know issue of concern you know for us immediately so we will not focus start focusing on that but as a passing observation we can see that yes my attention goes to those things which i have considered important till now now that i have been able to see that the self is important the imagination in the self is important therefore i have to pay attention to my imagination so if i can just do this without observe this without reaction then i my attention will come back to my uh, my imagination maybe you know after some time which is fine so this is one observation working with step 1 the other observation is that when i am working with step 1 that is observing my imagination that is going on at this moment of time initially i am able to see some gross imagination going on some particularly some gross gross thought thoughts which are full of contradiction thoughts which are quite agitated i am able to see those thoughts if there is a peaceful thought going on if there is a harmonious thought going on i am not able to observe it so that is because my subtlety you know of observation is very less i can only observe the gross things so whenever there is a gross thought like this which is full of agitation full of opposition contradiction i am able to observe those thoughts but when there is a peaceful thought harmonious thought i am not able to observe them so if that happens fine you know i don't have to react to it i just have to keep observing and if i just keep observing without reaction slowly i am able to develop the subtlety of observation i can observe more subtle things than what i was able to observe before that potential is always there i only have to develop that as a competence so if i continue to pay attention without reaction then what will happen is that this agitated thoughts this you know and and thoughts full of contradiction i am able to see and if i continue to observe after some time these agitated thoughts start settling down and we have thoughts which are harmonious peaceful in nature and i am able to observe them also so this is how my capacity my competence to observe things will become 
you know, will develop and become more such. So I'm able to see certain thoughts. Then next thing is that I'm able to see the thought and maybe I'm not able to see the desire which is at the base of this thought. So now I decide within myself that I also have to see the thought, the desire, the feeling, which is guiding this thought, which is at the base of this thought. So if I bring this to myself that yes, I have to observe that feeling, that thought, desire which is leading to this thought, then slowly I'm able to see the desire also, I'm able to see the feeling also. So like that, step one is quite, in, you know, uh, important as we have been saying that it is quite important and it is quite simple. Simple in the sense that the capacity to observe is already there. Right. And things that I have to observe, the imagination is also there. I only have to take the decision. So if I take the decision to observe, I'm able to observe my imagination, which is going on anyway. It is important in the sense that all other steps are founded on this step one. So in that sense, it is very important. And we said that it's important to see the imagination, the feeling, the thought that I have at this moment because that decides my happiness or unhappiness, which we have seen in step two and three. So we have to keep working on step one every moment because this imagination is going on every moment, continuously because I want to ensure continuity of happiness. You want to be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment. Therefore, I have to observe my imagination, my feeling, my thought every moment. And ultimately, I have to make sure that the feeling I have at this moment, the thought I have at this moment is in line with the feeling which is naturally acceptable to me which is natural to me, the feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence. That is what we are trying to work at the level of exercise, you know, step six and step seven. So that I want to do every moment. Therefore, I have to start with observing the imagination, the feeling, the thought every moment, whether it is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence or not, at least I have to start observing it, I have to be aware of it, I have to work on it, so that ultimately I can make sure that every moment my feeling, my thought is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. If I will be able to do that, I will be able to ensure continuity of happiness in myself. So step one is very preliminary, but very important, very significant, right? And of course, the major work is to be done at the level of step one. If a step one goes well, other steps will naturally follow. Other steps will naturally follow. So we'll continue to work with step one, that is being aware of my imagination, being aware of my feeling, my thought at this moment of time. And then the next moment of time, in the next moment of time. So we are being aware of our imagination, of our feeling, of our thought, every moment without reaction without reaction. So we are just observing the feeling, the thought we have at this moment and ultimately every moment.
with this step 2 and step 3 are very simple and straight forward if i am grounded in step 1 2 and 3 is very you know simple in step 2 i am just asking myself whether this feeling that i have at this moment is it natural to me is it naturally acceptable to me or not and in step 3 i am just asking myself that with this feeling am i in a state of harmony within am i in a state of comfort within am i in a state of happiness within so very simple question to ask in step 2 and step 3 step 1 i am able to observe the feeling the thought that i have at this moment in step 2 i am observing whether this feeling is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me whether it is natural to me not natural to me in step 3 i am asking this feeling does it lead to a state of comfort harmony and happiness or not so does it lead to state of harmony and happiness or it is leading to state of contradiction and unhappiness it is generating some discomfort within so two and three are simple straight forward of course very useful because with step two and three we are able to make the conclusion that whenever i have a feeling which is natural which is naturally acceptable then it leads to a state of harmony within and happiness within on the other hand if i have a feeling which is not natural to me which is unnatural for me something then it leads to a state of contradiction within state of unhappiness within so natural feeling leads to a state of harmony and happiness and unnatural feeling leads to a state of disharmony contradiction and unhappiness so this is a very important conclusion derived out of step 2 and 3 that my feeling whether it is natural or unnatural decides whether i am in a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise so my happiness or unhappiness depends upon my feeling whether it is natural or unnatural so with a feeling of opposition which is not a natural feeling i am in a state of contradiction and unhappiness with a feeling of relationship feeling of affection i am comfortable within i am in a state of harmony and happiness whether i am expressing it to other human being or i am not expressing it but this feeling itself which is in line with my natural acceptance you know leads to a state of harmony within a state of happiness within therefore i can see that my imagination my feeling my thought is important because it leads to a state of happiness or unhappiness and of course happiness or unhappiness is important for me so what i said in the beginning that we are doing this exercise with the purpose of ensuring a state of continuous happiness within so that happiness is important that continuous happiness is important It, and this happiness in the self is related to my feeling my thought therefore my feeling my thought my imagination is important therefore i must start observing it as we did in step 1 then we must evaluate it without reaction in step 2 and 3 and then ultimately we'll see that we must make sure that the feeling the thought that we have at this moment is in line with my natural acceptance 
it is in line with the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable to me that feeling and if i can do that i can be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment and that is what we are trying to do in step 6 and step 7 so step 1 2 and 3 together gives me the clarity that my feeling my thought is responsible for my happiness or unhappiness right therefore i must be aware of this feeling this thought this imagination and i must set it right i must set it right you know i must ensure that the feeling that i have at this moment is a natural feeling and not otherwise is a feeling which is naturally acceptable to me and not otherwise so this is the outcome of step 1 step 2 and step 3 which have to keep working every moment without reaction this without reaction is something which will run through all the seven steps okay. step 1 just observation no evaluation no reaction step 2 and 3 there is observation there is evaluation but no reaction that we have to always keep in mind and that itself is a very important thing to do no reaction not trying to hold on to the feeling that we have a state of happiness that we have and not trying to <coughs> force to remove that state of this harmony and unhappiness this a natural feeling which is giving rise to this just observing just evaluating and that's it now with this conclusion that my feeling my thought my imagination leads to my state of happiness or unhappiness the next question is that if that is the case then who is deciding for this feeling this thought which is leading to a state of harmony and happiness or the harmony and unhappiness so in step 4 we are asking this question that given this feeling and thought that i have at this moment right and which is leading to happiness or unhappiness now my question is who has decided this feeling this thought which is cause of my happiness who has decided it so there are three possibilities either the external physical condition has decided it or i have decided it myself or somebody outside other human being has decided so we have written three conditions the external physical condition it might decide it or it may be the other human being or it may be i myself so let us find out who is deciding it so basically in step 4 we are asking this question that the feeling the thought that i have at this moment which is the cause of my happiness or unhappiness who is taking decision for this feeling for this thought to be there is it some physical condition is it some other human being or is it i myself ultimately so this is very important observation to make and if i make this in from in observation i can see that ultimately yes 
it is me who is deciding the external condition or the other human being can only trigger the process initiate the process draw my attention towards it but ultimately it is me who is deciding for the feeling for the thought that i have at this moment so we have taken this example of somebody you no know, bad words being used by somebody right so that external condition is same but whether i will have a feeling of opposition or a feeling of kindness for the other depends upon myself it depends upon how i look at it right how i look at it myself how i look at the other human being how i look at the whole circumstances so i will ultimately decide whether to have a feeling of opposition or a feeling of kindness for this other person who is using a bad word so this i can see that i am responsible i am taking the decision for the feeling for the thought that i have this moment and if i can see this that i am responsible for the feeling for the thought i have at this moment and this feeling this thought is leading to a state of happiness or unhappiness therefore i can see that i am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness that i have in myself and if i start observing this over a long period of time and with fineness i am able to see that i am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness the external conditions the other human being may be favorable or unfavorable but ultimately it is me who is deciding the feeling that i have at this moment the thought that i have at this moment and which leads to a state of happiness or unhappiness so ultimately i am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness 100% if i can see this there are two important outcome and that you can you know observe within yourself whether this outcome is there or not whether you are able to see this you know uh, deduction out of your observation or not the outcome is that when i see that i am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness and i know that i want continuity of happiness every moment then i realize that if i am taking decision in favor of making myself unhappy there is something wrong with me there is some problem with me and therefore i have to improve upon myself therefore i have to work upon myself so one important conclusion is that i am willing to change myself i am willing to develop myself transform myself and second important conclusion is that when i am able to see that i am responsible for my happiness and happiness then i start getting rid of complaints for others because till now i out thought i thought that my unhappiness is because of the others because of the external condition so i had lot of complaints against this the other human being and the external condition now that i realize that it is me who is ultimately responsible for the feeling and for the state of happiness i am free from the complaint of others and i continue to work for my own self development so with this realization of step 4 that yes i have to improve upon myself i have to work upon myself i have to develop myself i have to transform myself now we 
try to look at our, our state of being and how we can improve it. So that is what we are doing in step five, step six, and step seven. In step five, now we are asking this question that if I am taking a decision for a feeling, which is natural or unnatural, and ultimately it is me who is responsible for it, then what is the basis of my taking decision? What is the basis of my taking decision for a particular feeling, for a particular thought? So if I look at that in step five, ask this question to myself, I find that there are two possibilities. One is that if I am taking decision about, you know, decision for a feeling with respect to some reality, let's see other human being. So if I'm deciding for my feeling for some other human being, then there are two possibilities. Either I have understood this human being about whom I am trying to decide my feeling. So either I have understood that human being and of course, at the background of it, I have understood myself. So I have understood myself and I have understood that other human being. Right? Or I have not understood the human being, but I have made some assumption. I have some assumption, some preconditioning about the human being. So these are two possibilities. So that we should be able to see. And then we should be able to see that when I have the right understanding about myself and about the other human being, then I always decide for the right feeling, for the feeling which are naturally acceptable to me, like feeling of trust, respect, affection, and so on. And with that feeling, which is natural, I'm in a state of harmony and happiness. This is definite. So if I have the right understanding and I'm taking the decision on the basis of that right understanding of that reality, which I'm you know, trying to relate to, then I take the decision for the right feeling, for the natural feeling, for the feeling that makes me you know, happy. So there is no problem. I'm settled. But if I'm not having the right understanding about myself or about the other human being, then I go by assumption and there I am likely to make any mistake. If my assumption is right, then I will take the decision in favor of right feeling, natural feeling and be happy. But if my assumption is wrong about the other human being, then I will make a wrong decision about the feeling. That is, I will decide for the feeling which is unnatural. And that unnatural feeling will lead to a state of contradiction and unhappiness. <clears throat> so let us observe this. And with this observation of step five, now we feel the need that we need to understand the reality with which we are interacting so that our feeling can be set right. So we need to understand the reality around us. And we also need to see as to what are the feelings which are naturally acceptable to me in the context of the reality outside in the context of the whole nature in the context of the whole existence so that is what we are trying to do in step six and step seven so we are trying to understand the reality we are trying to understand the feelings which are naturally acceptable to us in this you know, when relating to these realities so we are trying to understand, identify this in step six. And in step seven, we are make, trying to make sure that 
now that we know which are the feelings which are naturally acceptable to me, it's, I must be able to ensure that the next moment of you know, time, I have the feeling which is in line with the feelings which we have identified as natural feelings and not otherwise. So this is what we are doing in step six and step seven. So step six, I'm asking this question about which feeling is naturally acceptable to me? The feeling of relationship or opposition, feeling of harmony or disharmony, contradiction, and feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle. So three questions we are asking in part A of step six. So which of the feeling is naturally acceptable to us? The feeling of relationship or opposition, feeling of harmony or disharmony, feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle. And if I ask this question to myself in step six A, I find that it is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable to me, which is natural for me and not otherwise. Not otherwise. So this clarity I can achieve by direct observation, by directly asking this question to myself that it is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable and not otherwise. And if this is the case, then in step 6b, you know, we are trying to understand the relationship, the harmony, the coexistence. So this is what we will do in step 6. And if the outcome of step 6 is very clear, then step 7 is a very natural thing to do. In step seven, we are just trying to make sure that the feeling that I have at this moment is in line with my natural acceptance, that is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. So very simple to do. In step six, I'm able to see that it is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable to me. And therefore in step seven, I'm just trying to make sure that the feeling I have at this moment is in line with feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. So in step seven, at this moment, I'm trying to make sure that the feeling, the thought that I have at this moment is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. Next moment, again, I'm trying to ensure that my feeling, my thought is in line with this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. And the next moment, I again ensure this so if I can do this moment by moment, if I can do this every moment, then I can be in a state of comfort, state of harmony, state of happiness every moment. So I can be in a state of continuous happiness. So this is what I'm trying to do in step six and seven. Six, I'm trying to verify that it is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable to me and not otherwise. And in step seven, I'm trying to make sure that the feeling that I have this moment of time in me, in my imagination, has to be in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. And if I can do this, I can ensure continuity of happiness within myself. So this is what we are doing in exercise one, 
step one to step six, step seven, trying to observe the self by the center. So each one of us have to go through these steps, one to step seven, every moment, every moment. And if we do that, then we can slowly, you know, improve upon ourselves. We can go through this process of self-transformation, self-development. So if I'm able to do it, Properly, every moment I will be able to make sure, as in step seven, make sure that at this moment of time, the feeling that I have, the thought that I have, is in line with my natural acceptance. And with this assurance, I can be in a state of harmony and happiness today. So making sure that my feeling is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. I can be in a state of harmony within at this moment of time, state of happiness at this moment of time. And if I continue observing and continue evaluating and continue ensuring that I have the right feeling, the natural feeling, that is feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. I can ensure continuity of my happiness and that is what is desired. So this is what we have to do. So for the last 40 minutes we try to work through it. For the 50 minutes we have tried to work through these seven steps. But I thought that it is useful to go through all these seven steps at one time so that we can do this you know, practicing every moment, right? every moment without any difficulty. So we have gone through this process. Now, if there is any immediate question uh, or any clarification required, then I can respond to it. Otherwise, I can even take it after seven o'clock. But yes, 